Okay, let's see. Let's pick a new one. Okay, let's see. Live stream. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm back. Can you see me now? Yay! Sorry. Yay! You guys, I'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes. You know, this is so silly. Can anybody go over to the other one? Because I think it's still, people are probably still chatting over there. Yay, you can see me and hear me. Okay, you guys, this is what I get for, like, just trying to, like, whatever. You guys, it always is, hey, Anne. Hey, Joyce, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Hi, Elle. Yay! Oh, my God. So I today has been insanely ridiculous. I'm just going to hook up another light because you can't see anything in here. You guys, it is so cloudy. I should take a picture and show you guys. Hi, Malia. Oh, I'm happy you guys found me back again. So my hottie, I told you, I told you guys you got a grill, right? How many of you guys have husbands who like have grill things going on? So, hey, Olga. Hey, yay. So he has a grill thing. Like, he has this real grill love. Like, okay. But he gets home from work so late, sometimes at night. So he grills. And he grills. And he took my light. I had a really, actually, a really nice light that I loved. Well, he took my light. And guess what? Can you guys guess? He broke my light. So he went and he bought me this light yesterday. And I happened. And I... He, I was going to put it up last night, but, you know, I took my babe to the airport. She's visiting her dad for five weeks, you guys. It's the first time the first time that she has ever been away from home that long. And so yesterday was a day of, like, she was having her own anxiety, you know, which I understand. You're 12 years old. You know, but she flies a lot to the East Coast, so anyway. So I didn't get to do it yesterday, and by the time I dropped her off, like, have you, how many of you guys have ever done unaccompanied minor flights with your kids? It's like, oh, this is going to be much better, but let me see if I can find a place to, the real, the real thing is going to be able to find a place to hook it to. Um, she has flown by herself many times, but for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe it's the age, she is just a little bit more yay I have light she's a little more anxious and so I didn't get anything done I did not get one thing done so by the time I came home last night I was like because you have to stay at the airport until the plane actually takes off my husband was working I went out to dinner with a girlfriend I didn't do anything I was so spent I was emotionally completely spent so needless to say I did not get anything done. But what was kind of cool today was, I've been up since like crazy. Your kids have done that flying as a minor when they were younger. It's hard. Yeah. Isn't this light super hot? Well, I don't know. We'll see. It might be, I might have it too close, but it's better than me being in the dark. It's nerve wracking, right? It's Cause you're waiting up all night. So like the first leg of her flight, she flies to it. Cause her, her dad lives in Boston. So she flies from, you can pick from Hawaii, you can go um, Hawaii, LA, Hawaii, San Francisco, or Oakland, Hawaii, Phoenix, Hawaii, Dallas, Fort Worth. Well, I try to pick the one that's the shortest flight as far as like the overall time. This is, ends up being like 13 hours. So, you know, so she arrived in Dallas, Fort Worth. And to make her call me when she gets there, you know, and they take them, they take really good care of her. But it stresses me out. So she calls me at three o'clock in the morning, you know, to tell me she arrived. Hi, Amberly. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Mary Lou. Anyway, it's ridiculous. So she called me to tell me that she arrived. And then she called me, you know, so I didn't sleep. So I didn't get anything done. How many of you guys, like, get a lot of stuff done? I, you know, like when your kids are flying or doing anything, I don't get anything done. I'm, like, the worst. I didn't get anything done. Got zero, zero done. Zero done. Zero. Zero, zero. So, hang on, I'm going to put it back in our Facebook group. So, I'm going to work on a couple of my magazine journal and my, um, 
Um, I was wondering, I'm working on my magazine journal, and then I'm also working on a collage book. Um, hang on one second, I want to put it in our group. So you guys have to tell me what, um, what you guys are working on. Give me one more second, because I can't see the chat and do this thing at the same time. Can I just tell you? This is ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. This is my life some days. Some days this is my life. It is just so stupid. Like, why this electronic thing? So I'll tell you why the electronic thing freaked out on me. Because today, so... Do you guys just tell me if like I'm like being a I'm, if I'm being too real because sometimes you know I know people don't want to hear real stuff sometimes but I was just like going through my anxiety of my you know kid being on a flight for 13 hours which I know it's silly because she's done it many times okay but still right I was going through that and then I was um, you know ha haven't you guys like just gone through like all that I'm, so, I'm sorry guys I'm trying desperately to put this to put it in our Facebook group and I can't get it to do it so that's just like brilliant you know so um so I'm trying really let me just mess with this one and then I'll look back at the chat so I'm trying to like get through my anxiety of you know my child leaving and you know and I'm not one of those, I don't think I'm an overbearing mother. I mean, maybe they, I don't think so, but you know, it's like, it's always subjective, right? So, um, hang on, I'm sorry. I put a new link in the group because now the old one, and I should go back and delete the old one. Um, so, okay, I did it. Yay. All right. Everybody's chatting and I'm missing everybody and you're all like, listening. so I was going through my own anxiety. So I was going through my own, like whatever it is. And you know, oh, you're, I'm going to read it, what everybody's making too. So I decided today I was going to do a clearing meditation on myself. So you guys, this is the one thing I know that the more you do and work with your own energy, the more, um, the more cool things happen for you, right? Like you're sort of synchronistic, synchronistically in the right place at the right time. You are, um, you know, but your energy also increases and increases and increases. Like that's just kind of how it works, right? Your in energy increases and you become more light. And as you become more and more light, um, you know, it's just anyway. So, so what happens is as you become more and more light, more and more things around you become either really evident that it's like something that you don't want or really evident that it's something that you do want. Does that make sense? So... What happened for me is that, you know, I was having my own like little anxiety or whatever was going on. And I was having my own stuff and hang on, just And I saw a lot of stuff about myself that I didn't like. I mean, do you guys ever get like that? Where you're like really seriously looking at your stuff and you're like, okay, this is not stuff that I like. Okay, good. Yay, I fixed it, I think. So I'm working on myself. I'm working on myself. I'm working on myself, right? Because I'm having like my own thing. I'm having my, you know, her being gone for five weeks. And it's more than that. And I've been cleaning up my house. I mean, does that really cleaning up my house? I mean, does that bring up everybody else's stuff too? It really brings up my stuff, you know. So, hey, Laura. I'm sorry. I had a, a meltdown. I mean, a 
energetic, whatever. So anyway, back to my ridiculousness. So I'm working on myself and my anxiety. I'm trying to let go of what I realized was keeping me back. And, 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 and tell me if you can relate to any of this. <laughs> you don't clean, L. No, but I live in a tiny house. And so I'm like cleaning out my closets. It's like really deep cleaning, which can I tell you brings out my crap. Okay, like intensely brings out my crap. So I'm doing that. I'm looking at myself. I'm kind of going through my whatever, you know, and I realized that the one energy that holds me back from doing absolutely everything that I want in my life is fear. Hi, Cassandra. How are you? It's fear. And so then I started looking at it. And then that kind of like, I was like, oh, I, I need to let this go. You know, I need to let it go. So, I mean, I'll do it with you guys later at the end of the, when we do our woo-woo at the end for those that want to stay for the meditation. But what happened to me is as I began to release this fear, and I don't even need to know what it is, but it's just a feeling, right? It's like that pit of your stomach kind of feeling, that anxious feeling, the whatever. As I began to like focus on my body and wherever my mind or energy would take me, I would just focus on that and just release the fear and love. I started to become, like I could, the energy became much more palpable to me. And so that's why the computer didn't work. <laughs> because as I do it, it doesn't always work good with electronics. Hi, Chai. Chai says, despite the most frustrating day, she kept her cool at the DMV. Oh, the DMV brings out the worst for me. It does. Yeah, they can make it worse for you totally. That's why you don't clean. You're so funny. You just got to Maryland. Oh, and you're going to do some shopping. You grew up in a fire. You, Malia's talking about fireworks. She said she grew up in a state where she grew up and lived in a state where there, where the fireworks were illegal. So it's weird seeing the tents all around there. Oh, wow. The fireworks are not illegal here, but they might need to be because we're in a drought. So I'm going to let me go back and see what you guys are chat, chatting about. So you got my 411. And, okay, let's see. So, hi, Elizabeth and Joyce and Marcy and Joni and Elle and Denise and Anne and Lala. How are you, Lala? I heard your surgery went well. We're happy for you. So, so happy. Malia and Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Olga. Hi, Joni. Hi, Elizabeth Gibson and Denise. And... Who else did I miss? And all you lurkers say hi. Hi, Kathy's World and Amber Lee and Mary Lou and if I missed anyone, chat with me and I'll. You're excited to make a new magazine journal? Oh, you guys got to go over to Laura's channel. Laura, what is the name of the video where you do your magazine journal? Laura does the most fabulous magazine journal and she hers is way better than mine. Mine's just going to be a recipe book, so. You're working on a baby book. Ooh, baby book label things. Ooh, that sounds good. Meta's working on curved spine. Then throwing things, right? <laughs> and then drinking tea and then saying, screw it. Ah, oh, paint dots. Oh, I hear you. Oh, my gosh. I can totally relate. Um, <laughs> you wish you had some cheap one, but you'll sell it for some Earl Grey. I love Earl Grey tea. Hi, Diana. You just finished paper dolls. Oh, I love paper dolls. You played with chalk with your kids. Oh, for fun. And you studied for your final, so that's so good. How are you, Miss Joyce? Joyce, I told everybody that you do these amazing crocheted papers. So, you know, this is the Joyce. When you got, weren't you guys in a chat with me somewhere and we were talking about doing crochet and I put in the chat you needed to go talk to Joyce? This is Joyce. See her name right there? Joyce, go three dots to the right. Subscribe to her, and then you can message her and see her beautiful crochet papers. Hey, Lisa. Okay, I think I said hi to everybody. And I said, hey, Jean, you're still working on your studio. Girl, your studio is going to be phenomenal. Hi, Elaine. Okay, you guys go over and look at, at, at the Jersey Crafter. Go over to look at her channel and see when, which one of her videos says doing a flip through through her daily. It's excellent. You guys will totally be inspired. Hi, Happy Ray. Okay, so that's that was the energy thing because 
it, it just happens that way. When you start clearing and becoming, and you guys, you have to do it all the time. It's not like a one time fits all. Well, is it your next, is your next live? Uh, Laura's saying, the Jersey Crafter saying she can promise to show it in her next live. Is your next live your video hop? What? Try that's ridiculous. Okay, you guys. So Joyce, post. Can you post some pictures of your crochet papers in Crafting Mama's Facebook group? And then that way people know how to contact you. You guys, they're amazingly stellar. I have some, and I made a journal and gave it away. So I would have to get some more of Joyce's. Joyce's. Uh, Papers. You're going to Florida in the morning to see your dad. Okay. You're going to miss a hop. So the next time you go live. So we're going to send you some, we'll send you some, I'm sending you love, Laura. I got your message earlier. And of course, absolutely, without a doubt. You're very stressed. Mary Lou says she's very stressed trying to clean and downsize. Mary Lou, I think we're kindred spirits. I completely feel the same way. I have it in my head and it's so stupid that if I um, downside, if I clean out some of my mess, that my house will show up, you know, because I've been looking to get a house, but nothing's come yet that I want. So, uh, how many of you guys are following along in my ridiculous uh, Tuesday, my ridiculous Tuesday stream of the Altered Encyclopedia, which is taking on a whole form of its own. And I'm working on m multiples of them. I'm just going to cut this. I guess I could, no, I can't keep from Paris with Love because it won't come out on the, won't come out. But I'm going to cut this and I'm going to, I'm going to see, I'm going to test and see if I can do a, a transfer you know, the same thing that I did here. Let's see if I can do it on inside this book. I'm going to pull my gesso. Okay. Oh, okay. So you guys didn't hear the best. So I decided. Oh, no. You have to pay $200 for glasses. Oh, please. When we do the woo-woo, ask for your eyes to improve. You know, for some people it does. So, uh, Mary Lou, so I seriously, like, went through all my, I had decided that I wasn't going to get another corporate job. Okay. Then Hottie and I went to find a, we, we've been looking at houses. And because I am self-employed, the lady at the bank said, you know, I know this is going to sound really stupid, but you'll get a better interest rate on a loan if you get a job. And I said, well, I'm self-employed. I mean, I have my own thing. You know, I do my own thing. I file my own taxes. I pay my own. And she's like, yeah, but she was like just telling me about some home programs that they have here and how, you know, how if I do that, that would be really helpful. You guys, I'm doing a gesso transfer, so that's just gesso. And this is a magazine. I don't know which one it was. I don't know. It was just a regular fashion magazine. It wasn't anything like fabulous. And so I'm going to do is I'm going to put gesso down on the page. And you got to put it on kind of thick. You don't want to put it on super thin. And then I'm going to lay the image that I want to transfer over it. And then I'm going to let it dry. And then you peel. And then you take a wet sponge and take it off, take the paper off, the back of the paper, and it transfers. Sometimes it comes out great, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's like, it's like hit or miss. You know, somebody wrote me when I, when I did the video, they said, oh, mine never come out. You guys, some of mine come out, some of them don't. It's like a little bit like jelly printing. So back to my ridiculousness. So I cleaned out my closets and I got rid of, you guys, I had a big time corporate job where I had lots of like suits and stuff, you know? You guys, you don't need suits in Hawaii. It's hot here. But, you know, when you I had a big-time corporate job, and I used to go to work in suits. Well, I gave a bunch of them away. 
I told you guys the story about how when I went for a job interview, I don't know, a while back that I went to get one of one of the suits out of my closet and it had molded. It's like nothing else in the closet was molded but my suit. And I was like, seriously, that is definitely like the universe going, uh, this is a big joke and the joke's on you, right? Now the next thing you need to do is burnish it down. Uh, anyway. Yes, so Malia, so you know what I'm talking about. Malia says she understands the same thing. So, so you know, it's like, So I've been struggling with it. So we qualified for this loan and you guys, houses are not cheap here. Okay. So like a che the cheapest fixer upper house is like 500,000, you know? So if you want something that's and that, it's not big and that might even be a tear down, like, like a, not even a, now you can buy something really far away for a lot less, but there's no work out there, you know? So, that's a whole other thing. Anyway. So the loan lady was super nice. She was super nice to me, whatever. So, you know, I said to my, I've been saying to my hottie, I've been saying like, you know, I really should go for a corporate job. Even if I do it for a year, I should go back to work for a corporate job. Not because I really want to, but because I can still keep myself employed stuff. But, you know, and I was just explaining to him and he was like, you know, he, you guys, he supports me and everything I do. I'm not trying to put Jesso on the on this magazine now. It just happens to be on the credit card that I'm using. And I just want to burnish it down. The key is, if there's any air bubbles between your paper and the Jesso, the image won't stick down. Okay. So, I was just talking to him about it. So, about in April, I got approached by this company that's fairly well known here. And... The guy, like, you know, I submitted my resume to him directly. I didn't go through corporate, which I should have, but I didn't. Anyway, so I submitted my resume directly to him. I got to let this dry now. So I'm not going to mess with it because I don't have a heat gun. I'm going to work on this until it dries. And then I'll, hopefully it'll be dry in a little bit and I'll take out the images. So I didn't, and, and I, he specifically said to me, send me your resume directly because if you send it through corporate, then it goes... It goes through whatever. So I never heard back from him in April. And part of me was kind of like, eh, I was not feeling it anyway. Well, fast forward, you know, we're trying to buy this house and the and the, the lady, the loan officer calls me and says, you know, have you, have you done your, have you gotten your menial job? I think she basically goes, go and take a job making like $30,000 a year. <laughs> I was like, Okay, but, you know, it has to be something I want to do, you guys. It can't just be anything. So today, after my clearing meditation, so I, so I cleaned out my closet, and I gave away, I would say, 80% of my work clothes. And just the other day, I was re-cleaning it out, going back through it, combing back through my closet, and just letting go of, like, Stuff that I know I'm not going to wear or stuff that I'm not, um, you know, that it, I didn't, you know, I'm just not going to wear it anymore. And they're nice things, you know. And you guys, it's in the back of my car. I should have dropped it off at the thrift store. Lo and behold, today I get a call from that company to go in for a job interview tomorrow. So, so because I was not up on my game and didn't drop all my clothes off at the, at the thrift store, I have something to wear to an interview. Is that ridiculous? That's so stupid. That's how my life rolls, okay? Yeah, going to my closet and finding that my clothes had molded was like a big ridiculousness. Oh, now he does not joke around about real estate. You guys are definitely... Hi, JL. Oh my gosh. Lisa says, if anyone's interested, Tuesday morning has Dal... Dollar Rowley paints for $1.99 each. Oh, go. I wish I was there. Well, I'm lucky that it, I didn't hate Carmen. I'm lucky that I didn't put my... I was feeling so weirded out yesterday. I have the whole back of my car is filled with stuff to go to the thrift store. And I was feeling so weirded out yesterday about my daughter and how she was like... 
having her moment and, you know, all the whole thing that I decided I was just going to focus on her and not focus on anything else. So that's actually why I didn't get there it was because I was focused on her. So maybe if she was having a better day, I wouldn't have gone at all. I mean, I would have already gone and I would have taken all my stuff, right? I mean, I don't know. So I'm going to, after our stream, right? He just called me right before the stream. After our stream, I'm going to put, I'm going to go put my, I'm going to go and grab my clothes out of the, out of the trunk and try and wash them or steam them or I don't know. They're not dirty, but you know, they've been back, I took them out of the closet and they've been bagged up. So the weird thing about my clothes molding and my hottie will tell you too, is that the whole closet, nothing molded except my work clothes. It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. Nothing molded but my work clothes. It was like the universe saying, no, don't do it. So his clothes were in there. My clothes were in there. All my other non, my other non whatever clothes. Ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know why I cut out that car, but I did. Just looking through to see what I have. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you guys. You guys, look what Sherry sent me. Sherry, if you're here, thank you so much. Hi, Mitt. What did I miss? When you first went to my house? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I'm missing the whole thing. Okay. Laura, we're sending you love for your dad. Denise says when she first got married, she went to buy a house and they wouldn't include her income because she was, was of childbearing age. How about that one? Denise, do you know what I remember? I remember my dad taking a loan against our house with my mother's name on it and not needing her signature. My dad could sign for her and it was legal. My mother's so mad. We love you, Laura. Big, big hugs. But I want to show you guys what Miss Sherry sent me. I'm going to use it. I'm going to make some ATCs, but I'm going to definitely use it. She sent me this really sweet package. And look, it has this cool eye stamp. Remember she was asking, and it's from Stamp Abilities. Isn't it cool? I'm so excited to use it. Yours was back in 1972. I don't remember when my mother's, my parents were, but it was like, my mother was pissed because he wanted to buy like a, no, my, my dad was a big hunter fisherman and he wanted to buy like a bunch of stuff, like a fishing lot, you know, a fishing camp. My mother wasn't for it. He did it anyway. He took the money. It's ridiculous. So look what she get, made me. She made me an ATC, which I love. Look at this. This is a, a really cool ATC. And look at this baby paper clip. Isn't that amazing? It's, good. it's such a cool, cool paper clip. Right? Little clip on it. It's a celebrate. And it's from the 4th of July challenge. If you guys haven't headed over to um, Stacy from Pink Poodle Crafter, she's doing a 4th of July ATC challenge. So she sent me this. And then she sent me some cool die cuts, which I could do my own artist trading card challenge, and, you know, make my own artist trading card. And then she sent me the things that you put on the back, which really tells you, like, who made it and all that, which are really cool. And then she sent me all kinds of little things for her... For the USA and look she sent me mini file, mini file folder punch out oh my god this is so cute look they're like little tiny mini file folders oh my god I love them that is very sweet thank you Sherry I really appreciate it you guys never feel like you have to send me anything look is, aren't they cute oh my gosh so I should make my own ATCs out of it maybe if I have a card over here I'll make an ATC while I'm waiting for my gesso to dry my gesso um yeah so i guess it's divine timing i mean i did figure out that the house will come eventually perfect stamp cold for my side no right my the eyeball style what am my third my 12 year old said i'm the the crafting mama who loves what did she call me yesterday she said every crafting mama is different just give me the whole 411 she says like you're the crafting mama of eyeballs or something like that. I was like, well, thank you. She sent me this. this is cool. She said it came out of the printer kind of funky, and she thought it was cool. Isn't it cool? Right up my alley, you guys. Totally right up my alley. She said, paper ran out of ink, and I thought the paper turned out cool. I like it. You guys, I'm always in for something ridiculous. Right? So sweet. Thank you, Miss Sherry. And I will definitely use your eyeball stamp. 
So, um, guys, I feel like I've had, how many of you guys, I feel like I've had two weeks in this one week. Does that make sense? Like I've had two weeks worth of ridiculousness in one week. That's how I feel right now. That is how I feel. See, look, there's an eye. Had to cut out the eye. It was nice paper. I agree. So I have a question for you guys. I want to do a one stamp envelope swap. I love this picture. Look, it's a woman with her head in the sand. <laughs> her head buried. Um, I want to do a one stamp envelope swap where you send like an ATC and then something to make ATCs with. And it has to be one stamp. And, and you can send international too. It doesn't have to be just one stamp domestic. It could be international as well. But so I was going to put it up in our, in our group. And I wanted to do it at Christmas, but you guys remember how sick I was at Christmas. I couldn't. You guys, I could barely even, I don't even know how I made it through that time. This work's been insane and you're exhausted. It's been so weird. This week is... Denise says she couldn't even get a credit card in her name. Oh my gosh. Hi, Melissa. You know, times have, times have changed, you guys. Times have totally changed. Um, you guys, this is the random bits. I am going to go through and reorganize all of these bits. But some of them I just like, some of them I really love. You have that picture of Macy Gray? Oh, I loved it. I love the way, I love her face, and then I loved this side. So I like both of them. Macy Gray and then the brides. Anyway, this week, you guys, I could have taken a vacation for myself. Honestly, I don't know how to do that, but I felt like I could have. I felt like I really, and I felt like I really needed a vacation for myself. I was like, this is beyond me. This week is beyond moi. I, I just, it, it's just been a weird week. I'm glad I'm not the only one that has experienced the the odd week. And for those of you that don't know me, this is just my process. I kind of like work better in chaos. You know, I just do. It's just how I work. A vacation for myself. I'm serious. I need it. You'd like to never repeat this week again. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I can relate. Um, you know what, Chai, I'll put it over in our Facebook group. And if the, if some of you don't have Facebook, if you want to put you, if you want to participate, send me in the description box is my email. And, um, you can just email me and say, I want to participate. Give me your address and just tell me, do you want to do, um, how many you want to do? I mean, you can do more than one, you know? And if you want to do international or, because international, I think the stamps are what, a dollar, a dollar twenty-five. Hi, Caitlin. Oh, Mama, how are you? Oh, I think, Elizabeth, I think you and I were in the same, we were having the same week. Um, so you just have to, if you don't have, if you want to, I'm going to, I'll put the swap up. I'll try to do it today. I'll try to post it tonight. Um, and... What we'll do is we'll make it like for, you can sign up and then the mail out will be the end of July. Does that work for everybody? I don't know if you're a part of it. Try go and check it out. It's Crafting Mamas on Facebook. And anybody can join. And if you want to, please. I mean, so, you, but if you don't have, if you don't, if you're not in the U.S., I mean, if you're not, you, you, anybody can sign up, but just make sure you tell me U.S. or international, and then I'll give you a partner, and then I'll put the parameters in there. It's just like make one ATC that you're going to send to the person, and it can be any theme, you guys. It doesn't have to be a specific theme, and just your artwork, and then send them the supplies to make an ATC. So it would be like a playing card or just 
little bits of scrap stuff that you have, maybe some images you've cut out, stuff that you like. You know, my, my only thing is don't send anybody something, only send somebody something that you would like to receive. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm glad you get to craft again. Um, I'm just working on a collage book tonight, Caitlin, but with the swap is going to be an artist trading card. And you remember when we did the power pack? Those were artist trading cards. Those little, those little inspirational cards. So what we'll do is we'll give everybody, we'll give everybody like a week or so to sign up, and then I'll put out partners, and then just try to mail it out by the end of July. Does that work for everybody? And it doesn't have to be like some crazy complete. The whole idea, you guys, is just sort of like getting some cool happy mail and sending somebody some little bits and pieces of stuff that you have. And the other thing is that, you know, you can, you know, just, it's one stamp thing. A one singular stamp in an envelope, in a business envelope. It's not, don't go overboard. So like, let me see. I'll put to, I'll show you what I would send. Hang on. Let me see. I know I have, I know I have, I saw some APCs that I made over here. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was in another thing I saw them, but. Well, I don't have any ATCs over here, but. You guys can get the idea. So like maybe you would send in your envelope, maybe you'd send like a playing card. You would make your own handmade ATC, like the one that Sherry sent me, right? And then maybe you would send a playing card and maybe you would send, maybe you would send a napkin or a piece of a napkin. Maybe you would send some little images and maybe you would, I don't know, maybe you'd send a few little painty papers, little painty paper scraps. But just make sure that on the back of your artist trading card it has, remember what Sherry sent me? And I think somebody made a PDF of this in our group, and if not, I'll find one and make one for all of us. Where, so, like, Sherry sent me this. Like, this would have been perfect, except that she could have, this one she sent a stamp in, so it was more, like, a, a rubber stamp, so it was more than, than a dollar. But, like, this would have been, like, the perfect little thing to get for your ATC swap, right? If it fits into a one-stamp envelope one legal size stamp so like she sent me a die cut like so she sent me a handmade ATC and then she sent me like the back of the ATC cards right so make sure that when you do your thing I'll try to post one in the group and if I can I'll put if I if I can make my own PDF or find one that's already made for free I'll link it in the description box for anybody so you can print it out but make sure it has the back of your you know tell the name the title of your piece of art your name when you made it you know, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, we're talking one envelope swap. We're not talking, you don't have to send a bunch of stuff. Okay? One made ATC and one and, and a few little bits and pieces. Now, don't go buy a bunch of stuff, you guys. If you don't have any playing cards, don't send one. If you have them, send them. You know, it's like, you don't have to. Like, send, you know, somebody sending you, like, a couple of napkins and a bunch of little collage bits is great. Margie, how are you? What did I miss? The first class envelope for one ounce is 50 cents. So whatever you get in your envelope for under one ounce, right? And what does anybody know what the um, international is now? I don't know what international is now. I have no idea. You guys, all I know is that anytime I used to send stuff, I'm not saying an envelope, okay? I'm saying like a small package. No matter where I sent it to overseas, it was always $25. Oh, Curly, you don't have to leave. You don't have to be in a positive mood. Don't be, you know, be where you are. Nobody's going to make you be in a positive mood. Be exactly where you are. We are fine hanging out with you however you are. You do not have to be in a positive mood to hang out with us. I'm telling you guys. My day yesterday was so rough, and then 
me not sleeping, and then I had to get up with my hottie because I told you he started a morning job. So I'm like up at 5 o'clock, like trying to help him get himself out. I love this picture, but the page is too small. I don't want to cut it off until I find something to go with it. Let me look in this envelope and see what I have. But Curly, we love you, and you don't have to go anywhere. You do not. Hi. I, I sent you a new link. I'm sorry, Lynn. Curly, you don't need to have, you don't have to go anywhere. I've been having, can I tell you? You guys, I think, in, I got a phone call from a friend of mine, and she never, like, she called me and she said, I need, like, some, some serious help here. And I was like, what's going on with you? And she had the serious, she had the same weird, the same weird day. Okay, I like that. We love you, Curly. You don't have to go anywhere. You can be in a funk. We love you no matter what. So you guys, I don't even know if I want this job. And I'm a little miffed at them because I'm like the best in my field. And the guy like, the guy like wasted my time messaging me in April and then never got back to me. And I just find that so unprofessional. Like just write me back and say, you know, We'd like somebody with less experience <laughs> who will kiss our asses, <laughs> which is what I think it's what what I think it is. I think corporate is making them making me making him give me an interview. The universe is being crabby. I hope I hope it calms down. Oh, I felt so bad for my friend. She was like, she was like telling me like she was like this has been the weirdest week, and we were comparing notes. And I said, sister, join the club said, join the club of my life. Join the club. So. Charlie, no, Charlie, stop. You guys, I told you, and there's nobody home. I can't even, I can't even pawn her off on somebody because there's absolutely no one home but me because my hottie's at work, the babes at her dad's in Boston, my other daughter's not home either, so it's just me and Charles, me and me and the Charlie girl. You ne you never know what somebody else is going through. Okay, so Diana is saying first class international mail is a dollar fifteen. So know that if you're going to enter and if you want to do our swap, that it's 50 cents for, and you can, you can just say one partner us and do one fifty cent ATC, or you can do multiple. It just depends upon how many people are going to sign up. So say you say, I want 10, but only eight people sign up. Do you see what I'm saying? So it has to be, you just have to roll with it. You have to roll with it. No, you're right. You never know what somebody's going through. You never, you know what? And even when you think you know, you don't. That's, that's what I've experienced. I need a piece of a paper magazine. Right? They've been weird this week. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Not that I want anybody to have any weird things, because, you know, I don't. But I'm just saying. It makes it, it makes you feel like less alone when you go, when somebody else goes, yeah, I've had some, it's been a kind of a weird week for me too. All right, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this as my glue palette. So what was I going to tell? Let me think what else I can tell you. Let me think of some good stuff I can tell you. Um, well, the meditation that we're going to do today is going to be off the hook because I'm telling you, I've been working on myself all since yesterday all night because I didn't sleep and so the meditation will be good today that's for sure um what else besides the fact that I don't have to go buy new clothes because I can I didn't throw my I didn't throw my clothes away which was like huge for me because I could have very well just thrown my clothes out So you guys send me some, some good vibes for that. It's 
totally Olivia Ghost. This is your Crafting Mamas. And you can be cranky Crafting Mamas because trust me, I've been having some cranky crafting going on myself. You know, I find sometimes, like when, I, for me, when I'm in like the worst space, just doing something as silly as gluing. Right, Laura? Laura, gluing and gluing's therapy. Except Laura makes beautiful covers with her gluing. Mine is just like random collage bits. <laughs> you like my pages? They're just like, a, they're whatever I have on my desk, okay? They're not, there's no plan. There's no plan. Sometimes I just put stuff down just to put it down. How many guys, How many of you guys do that? You just go, I'm just going to put it down just to put it down. Sometimes it makes sense and other times it just doesn't. Like I want, need a glass of wine. Here, who wanted a glass of wine? Here, here, this glass around here. You ate lots of ice cream. I, yeah, I totally get it. Laura says she literally glues fabric onto an index card because that's what I started on. Oh, I hear you, Mama. I understand. Mindless gluing is relaxing. I need you. Yeah, let Jane want some ice cream. Could you send some her way? Ah. Lizzie said she watched Laura and said Laura said just glue. So sometimes they go together easy and other times it's like, I know if I'm struggling, like it's like not meant to be, you know, I just got to let it go. I found this fire dancer and I can't, and so I cut part of it off because I like the fire and then I had a really good fire dancer. I can't find it. How many of you like cut up things and you're just like, oh, I'm going to find something. Maybe I have a focal point for here. I'm going to cut up something for this and you cut it out and then. You put it in your myriads of things that you cut out and it goes missing and then you find it and you see that How many of you look through your stuff and you see the same images all the time? You're like, this is not what I want and then you're really looking, you're looking for that one image That you that you know that you cut out and you can't find it That's me. But you know, I also have like interventioners here who like They'll see my envelopes full of like little Cut up things and I think they actually throw some of them away <gasps> Throw them away. They'll think, ah, she'll never know it, except for I'm still looking for that one piece. <laughs> it made Lizzie happy. I love Lizzie. You make embellishments when you're not when you're not in the mood. Oh, that's good. Oh my gosh, you lick the spoon clean at the bottom. You know, if I had ice cream right now, I probably it would probably really make me sick. Charlie, stop. Dude, stop. Because I haven't had any dairy for quite a while. I, and, and no sugar. I, I, if I had ice cream, I would probably get really sick. What else was I going to tell you guys? Let's see. Besides Charlie's gonna bark she's just gonna bark I can't do anything about it she the mailman comes every day and she barks at him as if it's the first time which is so ridiculous and the mailman's actually frightened of her guys she's all of like seven pounds I mean Charlie stop she's all of like seven pounds and she couldn't do anything if somebody walked up to her she would run away so the mailman is afraid of her which is so stupid but whatever and she, she's just ridiculous. So now that she's been pacing in the house and I was doing a ton of laundry earlier and she was like pacing back and forth because she thought I was going to leave because she wants to ride in the car. My belly doesn't go there. My blue eye could. That might be a little creepy. What type of dog is she? She's like a, she's a whippet. I think she's a whippet chihuahua mix. Your cat weighs more than her. When we got her, you guys, she was only like four pounds and she was so malnourished. It was like so sad. It's taken her, we've had her about two years, I think now, and it's taken her like all this time to like really feel comfortable and gain weight. So the eye's a little creepy for there. I love the eye. I'm not going to let go of the eye. Charlie, stop. Charlie is like seriously 
my neighbor pulled her truck in, in my yard, and so that's why she's gonna she's gonna protect me. You glued on these index cards, Laura. These tiny ones. She's so sweet. She is such a sweet dog. She is so sweet. Oh, we love you, Laura. And did you hear Maridel? I was listening to her stream before I started my stream. Um, but I was listening on my phone, so I could I didn't chat. So she's probably like gone. Shelly's not chatting today. Maybe I'll put the white chair there. The white chair. Guys, I don't know why I have a thing for chairs, but I do. I'm going to put the white chair there. So Maridel's going to do her marathon. Your dog is oblivious to the outside world. My dog is, this dog, can I tell you, if a butterfly flies in, she runs and hides under the bed. Okay. So she's ferocious, but she won't like do anything. She's just, she's just trying to protect me. She's getting more boisterous and she's being more, um, she's funny, but she doesn't like other dogs. It's like so ridiculous. So we tried to socialize her, my daughter, but that's, um, 21. Her boyfriend has a really beautiful, I think it's a Weimaraner, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. Beautiful dog. I only saw the dog at night, so I, I didn't really scope it out and give it the four one one. But um, Charlie's so scared of her. Hi, Linda. Charlie, like, hi, vet. Charlie would not even look at her. So we've been talking about trying to socialize her. I don't know how that's going to happen. She won't even have, she just runs and hides. She is hide. She does hide from a butterfly. I'm telling you, we had like a, we had a big moth fly in the other night. You know, we, for those of you that are new to me, I live in Hawaii and all of our bedrooms in this house that we live in now, open up are all like patio sliding patio doors so they all open up to the backyard and I told you guys my yard grows like a weed like I don't have to do anything to it like we're having a drought right now but you would think by looking at my yard that I am watering it okay so the other night I am Charlie is in bed with me and I am I don't know, watching something on Netflix probably or Amazon, which I love. How many of you guys love Netflix and Amazon? I, you know, so good. I can watch some whatever. I can binge watch or rewatch or anyway. So she's in bed with me and this big moth flies in and it's like fl flying in because I have my lamp on next to the bed right but it was big it was about that big she the dog saw it she started barking and barking and barking and then she jumped out the bed and ran underneath it and my hottie's like what, what's happening i said this big moth is flying around in here and she's scared and he was just like she's so ridiculous so you guys this is a glue book for no reason i know i know somebody's gonna say what are you doing why what how it's for no reason there's no rhyme or reason for this glue book Okay, it's just whatever. It was an English book that I liked. Caitlin's telling me, um, let me see. Caitlin's telling me it's hard to socialize them. You have to make them feel comfortable in a space and introduce them really slow. Well, she is not, I, we've tried to introduce her to several dogs. She does not, she doesn't, I think she doesn't think she's a dog. <laughs> Denise says, George is her American Express. She can't leave home without him. I love Netflix. I'm like, yeah, but I think I've, 
Your neighbor calls her a cockroach because she does a belly crawl that gets him all. That is so cute. Your my fur baby is socially awkward too, Curly. My fur baby is completely socially awkward. So the cat. Okay, so we have this little rescue dog. We also have a rescue cat. That's a whole nother story. And we have a and we have a bunny. Okay. And the dog, the cat brings in these enormous geckos. And you guys, I've tried the Vulcan mind meld with her to tell her, leave it outside. She does not cooperate. So, and I don't, she doesn't kill them all the time, but it's nothing like having a large lizard in your bed when you don't want it. Your dog is spoiled. Laura says her dog's spoiled. Ours is too. So, the so when the dog sees the cat with, sometimes it's mice, although we haven't had any of that lately. The Vulcan mind meld on that worked because I was like telling her, oh no, but I'm not, you know, I don't like to kill anything. So it's like not, definitely not a good thing for me to like have, have that because it's like, ugh. So... The dog starts to bark at the cat, like, basically, like, telling on her when she has one. And then I, then one of us has to, like, catch the thing. The poor things lose their tail from stress. And they're huge. Like, one of them, <laughs> her my 20-year-old, my, my 21-year-old the other day heard her go, ah! I said, what is it? She goes, Godzilla's in my room. The cat had brought in. Oh, I love this. The cat had brought in like a really big, a really big um, lizard and just dropped it right there for her. Hi, Dana. Your dog ate your antibiotics? Oh, no. Your dog is a beggar in Romeo Caves every time. Oh, we call it hustling. We have a cat that's a hustler. And we, our cat is a hustler, okay? Our cat is a hustler. And if you, like, if you decide you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, she wakes up and she starts hustling you. Even though you know that she's already been fed. She is a hustler. Our cat is a hustler. She, and, and I, so last night when I got home from dinner with my friend and then, my hottie got home and then he decided that he was going to grill these steaks because he was going to grill them the day before. And for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. And so he decided, and it's really late, you guys. It's like, I don't know, 1130 and he's out there grilling. So the cat is like, oh man, she sees this as an, uh, that as an opportunity. And I didn't know if anybody fed her. Um, I mean, she had dry food, but... She has she gets wet food once a day, so I didn't know. So he's like making steaks, and the last thing I want her to do is, you know, hustle him because he's walking in and out and it's dark. He's trying to be quiet so he doesn't like get our neighbors all in an uproar. I love this pattern. I have a thing for weird patterns. Anyway, so she's like hustling him and so I go and feed her. My daughter tells me this morning, No, you didn't feed her, did you? I said, Yeah, she was hustling me. She said, Mom, I fed her when I got home. I said, she goes, now, from now on, we have to text each other. I said, well, I didn't know you didn't tell me, and then she left. Now I got home around 1030, and she was like, she'd gotten home, taking a shower, and she was going to her boyfriend's house. Okay, we're going to the movies. We have, like, a late movie here sometimes. They do in the summer, at least, and they were going to see. You guys, what are the kids' movies that are out right now? My head can't think. Something for Aladdin, not Aladdin. I can't think. She was going to that. <laughs> Margie says she has two cats that get up and lead her to and from the bathroom as if you can't remember where they are. Oh, ours are totally a hustler. Denise, mosquitoes love me. If we're in a room, never worry. If I'm with you, the mosquitoes will only bite me, not you.
Your dogs do the same, Elizabeth? Oh my God. Toy Story 4. That's what they were going to go see. So they had a midnight show of to Toy Story 4. So it was Toy Story 4. You guys see, I'm not even up on my kids' movies. So, and that's not normal for me. So that might go somewhere. Because I like the weirdest things. Can you see? Like, I'm tearing out pages of, like, this is just, like, um, I was water or something. Yeah, Toy Story 4. That's what they were going to go see. They were so excited about it. I was like, oh, good. I'm so happy for you. They were like, do you want to go? I was like, no, I'm good. I'm like, I don't need to go. Do you guys just sometimes just staying home is enough for me? That's why I don't know about this going back to work thing. You know, I don't know. I mean, I definitely want my house. and I would really like to get a good interest rate on a mortgage. And I would like to be able to get, you know, anyway, it's ridiculous. Like, so how do people do it that are self-employed? How do people buy homes that are self-employed? Do you just have to, like, save up and have cash? Is that how it works? I mean, I don't know. But houses are so expensive here, you guys, like really expensive. So I like this. I like these. Maybe I'll paint the page white, see if it's glued together. No, it's not glued together. Right, I'm going to glue some pages together before I do it. You're retired and you're loving it? Oh, I'm so happy for you. I am not retired. I, You know, you guys, I enjoy working for myself. I really do. I enjoy it. Okay, let's say she wishes she could live on crafting and selling. I'm currently crocheting another necklace. Oh, fun. Um, no, I don't. You guys, there was a time when I made a living off my art. I mean, different kinds of art. Like, big murals kind of stuff and um, jewelry, but can I tell you, it was so, it, for me, it really took the fun out of doing it. Does that make sense? Like it really took the fun out of, like when I had jewelry, like, I never will forget this. I had been, I had been a very loyal, um, do you want to call it supplier to this jewelry store in DC very loyal like this woman started a business and I was like very loyal to supplying to her and would give her lots of unique things so she could say that it's one of a kind and what have you right well my mom got sick first of all my littlest I had just had my daughter who's like the one that's 12 now it'll be 13 in August and my mom had been diagnosed with this very aggressive form of lung cancer. And I was going through, I was living in New York, and my mom was living in California, and I had this baby. She was little then, like maybe three, four months old. I don't remember, but I was flying back and forth from, and then I had my daughter that's 21 now. She must have been about seven or eight. And she was, so I was flying back and forth from New York to I was flying back and forth from New York to um, L.A. And going through with your parents, going through chemo and all that stuff, it's so... Talk about bring up your shizzle. It brought my shizzle up. I mean, I was trying to be there to comfort my mother, but at the same time just, you know, experiencing all the things that you experience. And this woman got really nasty with me. She was like, I need these orders. And I said to her, you know what? I said, no, she hadn't pre-sold them. It wasn't like she had pre-sold it or anything. It was like, you know, she, I would send her like new stuff every month or every couple months. And she sold a lot of work for me. I mean, I did make a decent amount of money. But she got so nasty with me over this, you know, like, and I was going through so much emotionally 
that after that, I said, I'm never doing I said, I will only work trade shows where people buy. Because a lot of times in the jewelry world, they want you, they'll buy a certain amount of it, but they want you to give them a certain amount of consignment. So basically, you're giving them a free business loan, right? So I was like, never again. I'm not doing it again. And then the other thing was, so when I did get back and I finally like took, I, I actually took some, I shipped her some stuff, some work. You guys, metalsmithing is not fast. If it's fast, it's usually crap. It's usually not made well. So I took her some work. Like when I, I got home, I, I shipped her some, whatever I had, which was not a lot. Do you try it? Having a, a newborn baby and then doing all that? It's ridiculous. So I want to put this here, but I want something else. And I don't want this red flower. I don't know what I want. I like this fabric thing, but I need something else here. I don't know. So I finally get back to, to New York one at one point in time, and I and I take a train to D.C. I had to go do something, probably a trade show or something with somebody else. And I take, and she had been so ugly to me, but I was trying to be like, oh, you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just so sensitive. Maybe I'm, you know, how many of you guys act like that? You're like, oh, it's just me. You know, I'm just a little sensitive. So I get there, and you guys, the stuff that I had shipped her like three weeks before was still in the same box that I shipped it to her in her safe. I was so pissed. I thought, uh-uh. I thought I was done. I, um, I severed my relationship with her. It just was like too much. It was like the insensitivity of it. I and mean, half the part of having your own business is being able to create your own, right, create your own stuff. Create your own hours, create your own. So I was like, okay, I'm done. I, I said to myself, I'm never going to say I wished I had made one more stack ring. <laughs> I was something stupid like that. I'm never going to go, oh, I wish I'd made one more stack ring. You're too old to be sensitive anymore. Uh, Melissa, I'm sorry. Paying it forward does rock. I agree. What are you guys talking about paying it forward? I missed that part. I missed that combo. I'm sorry. I'm looking at... It's hard to chat and then, like, create with my... I don't ever have a plan. Have you ever watched these YouTube videos where the people, like, have a plan? Like, they really have, like, a real plan. They make them, and you're like, oh, wow, I need to be more like that. That ain't ever happening. Ain't ever happening here. It doesn't matter what. I. Either has to be, like, a stream of consciousness for me or it doesn't work. It was, hi, Rebecca. Where do I get my images? Just from plain fashion magazines, like every kind of, like the ones that you can find everywhere. Like, um, let's see, I have Esquire. I get Esquire. Although I'm not getting any more magazines. And I'm going to send you some more. I just haven't gone on to, you got to go win the points to do it. Harper's Bazaar. I have a W magazine that's excellent. I should look in there and see what I can find. Sometimes this Esquire magazine, though, they have some really cool, they always have good watch images. Oh, look, and they have some good patterning. See, so I would cut this out. I think that's what one of those was. Um, I would cut this out. See where the person's pointing with the watch? I'd cut that out. Um, sometimes I did some art postcards with guys on it. I like her. I would cut her out. Um, I might cut these this propeller out and maybe the watch because you know I have a, some watch pages going on in here the giraffes I might cut out I usually go for the eyes I always cut out the eyes Like, I might cut out this plaid or um, some of this yellow. I might cut out the shoe because I have a very weird sense of whatever. I was just looking to see if there was anything that would go with my, that dish doesn't go. 
are you guys saying? You're back okay. I agree with you. Chai says it aggravates her more when people think that you have all the time in the world to create things like you don't have a life. Well, the, re the reality is you might put the guy on your wall. Oh, Joyce, you're so funny. There are some cute guys in here. I will say it. I don't often know who they are, but my daughter will go, oh, that's so-and-so. He's in this show. And I'm like, okay. Um, you know, I think the thing for me was I just had a baby, so I was stressed. Um, my mom wasn't well. I just moved. It was, um, look, I might cut out this picture of Mick Jagger. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, for all you Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, Quentin Tarantino fans, this one's a good one for you. Richard Nixon, wow. Anyway, you know, I don't know. I was going through a lot. But I think for that, it gave me the perspective for myself that if I wasn't in it for myself, like, nobody was going to stand up for me. Nobody was going to say... Nobody was going to say, okay, you know, I understand. And, I mean, look, I understand she needed to run her business, but, you know, it, it just kind of blew it for me. I was kind of like I was done after that. I was like, it's a done deal. I'm going to use my eyeball stamp and see how it goes. Uh, I can tell you this. If you've never made metalsmith jewelry, it is not two minutes. So, like, when you see stuff that's made in Mexico and made in Bali, most of the time those are made by young children, honestly. And, you know, it used to be bad when I was really, really heavily into making, um, into making jewelry because I would get off the subway in New York City and there would be like somebody there that was like, um, selling, that was selling hand, you know, and you can tell the difference between handmade jewelry, we're selling handmade jewelry. It would take all I could do not to buy it because I was like, they're selling it so cheap and he knew some child made it. And so, I don't know. Making jewelry is not fast for me. I mean, there are people that, you know, they can sit and bang out stuff or if you, or if you fabricate it, like if you make it with, um, You know, if you wax carve it. Oh, I love this stamp. Oh my gosh, I love this. Thank you, Sherry. Look at it. So I missed it. Let me go back up and look. Um, let's see. So Joni says, when she used to do shows, she'd be busy making for the shows. Well, then my mother-in-law would want to buy a bunch of what I made for the show. I finally told her I'd be happy to let her buy from what I have left. Oh, did I, didn't I tell you about my hottie's mother stealing earrings that I'd made? Oh, my God. Did I tell you guys that story? Oh, my God. So for those of you that don't know, I have my parents have passed away. They've been gone. My mom's been gone almost 13 years, and my dad's been gone like 11, I think. I think they died two years apart in the same month. Isn't that crazy? My mom died in the middle, beginning of March. My dad died on on um, St. Patrick's Day because he loved to party. So it's only apropos that he would pick St. Patrick's Day. Anyway, so. You know, both my parents, i got to find something else for this, have passed. So when we got together, I said to him, look, I don't do in-laws. I said, I, I'm no, nothing against you, but I don't do in-laws. Because I had been married for a long time before. And, you know, I, I had already done my parents. I said, but please, you know, you do your parents. Do not think that, you know, if you want to go and be with them or do whatever, I will never stand in the way of that. But I just don't, I don't want the whole in-law relationship, you know? I'm too old for it, and he was fine with it. He was like, 
he was like, trust me, I'm, I'm like good with it. I said, but please never let it keep you from, if your family's having like big functions, you go for it. I don't want to be included. And it's not because I don't want to be included. It's just, you guys, the drama for me was just not, I just didn't want it. And I don't know that his family was drama, but you know what I mean? The dynamic and the, I just, you know, everybody's got their own family dynamic. So, well, Hattie and I had been together several years before I met his dad. His dad had flown out here. His dad flew out after we, after I'd been living here for, I don't know, several years. But his mom never did. Now his parents are not married. They're divorced. His mom's remarried. So... And his dad flew out here because I had hit, my hottie has two sons, so he was, um, I was going back to the East Coast to spend the holidays with my family, my sister and her kids, and all my kids were going with me, and so I thought it was a great time, because we weren't going to be home, that he invited his sons and his dad, and whoever else he wanted to to our house and I wasn't going to be there, right? None, none of my kids were going to be there. So there was plenty of room for them. And they had a wonderful time. His dad was very sweet. His dad's a veterinarian, very sweet, very eccentric. So like I could just get right into it. So his mother, so in the meantime, his mother's sister came to Hawaii for vacation and insisted that my hottie and I go meet her for dinner. And my hottie was like, Oh my God. He goes, this is a whole competitive thing. He says, my mother and her sister are really competitive. And I was like, okay. And he goes, so I'm just sorry. You know, because he was just hear me out before you say or do anything. I'm sorry up front. So I was like, okay. Like kind of, kind of scaring me a little bit. So I was doing an art fair at that point in time. I was sell selling jewelry here, making handmade jewelry. And I was making some, some sea glass you know, scouring the beach for sea glass, which is not, unless we have a really bad storm somewhere else and it washes up, it's not so common to find here. I mean, you really have to like scour for it. So who, I love RuPaul. I like RuPaul's Drag Race too. I haven't watched it in a while though. So his aunt shows up at one of these art fairs and it's like art in the park. You know, it's like, outside and you have to put up your tent and you know what I mean it's like a whole thing and of course I knew who she was because I'd seen pictures of her but she didn't know that right so she thought she was going to come up and be some customer or whatever and so I hate my picture taken that's the other thing okay I hate hi Erin I hate my I hate my photograph taken don't ask me why I just don't like it Right? So I don't really like to be in all the pictures with everybody. I'll be the photographer, but I just don't like my picture taken. We all have our weirdnesses, right? So his aunt like pressures me into like taking a photograph with her and then sends it to his mother. So then that causes a whole bigger sibling rivalry. And she buys some earrings for me which I found out later was a big deal because even though his aunt is, is loaded, she's super cheap. And these earrings were not, they weren't expensive, but they weren't cheap. They were like 150 bucks. But they were made with these pieces of, they were made with like these really unusual pieces of sea glass that, you know, it was not, they were nice. She bought them for her daughter and they had pearls and they were nice. I liked them. Well, I said, well, and she bought a pair for herself. Well, I sent a pair with her to his mom. You hate having pictures taken too? Oh my gosh. So anyway, so it caused this huge, and now I didn't realize this. Okay. You guys, I, first of all, I was just like being kind and I'd already given him the 411. We've been together for years. All right. And I'd already said, look, I'm not doing your family. You do your family, my family. I, I'll do what's left of my family and I will not make you do any of my family. What's left of my family. Right. You do your family. You guys, it was both of our second time around. Like, I don't know. Maybe you guys had great in-law experiences. 
mine weren't great, but they weren't, I mean, they weren't terrible, but they weren't great. You know, it was just a lot of pressure and judgment and, uh, you know, it's like, whatever. Anyway, so it caused this big ruckus because his mom, you know, because her, the sister had met me before she did. It was just this whole ridiculousness. So then, like, I don't know, a month later, he, he, I'm at work, and he calls me, and he goes, you'll never guess who I got a call from. I'm like, I have no idea. Like, we have five kids between us. <laughs> what? You know, it could be any of them. Okay, I'm liking this. I don't know if it, I may put something else on it. No, it doesn't make sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Lori, did you say it on a video? Spill the tea? Probably. So, he's like, you'll never guess who I got a phone call from. I'm like, why? Well, I don't know. His mother. He got a phone call from his mother, and she was already here. Like, she was on the island of Maui. And he said, he said, she's way worse than my aunt. <laughs> he said, she's way worse than my aunt. And he was like, he was like, you don't have to meet or whatever. And I said, ah, I said, I don't know. Let me think about it. Okay. So then fast forward, like I was getting off work. We were, we were carpooling. I was waiting for him and I was going to go meet a friend for a drink. And I said, I told him, I said, why don't you meet us here? I'm going to meet, um, you meet me here and we'll, you know, I'm going to meet so-and-so for a drink. So he, we go to this little place, you know, we're like sitting, it's like indoor outdoor, so we're like sitting, you know, at the bar, but it overlooks like everything, so you can see everything that's coming. Okay, I'm liking it better. It might need some more. So, I think in a second marriage, Linda, you have courage to say I'm not doing this shit, okay? You're just like, I'm not doing it. So... We're sitting, he and I are sitting with this friend of ours at this like little bar in a restaurant that's looking out to the street, okay? And it's across the street from the ocean. There's no ocean view because there's like this other building obstructing it, but you know, there's other restaurant, but we're just like sitting there looking outside and I don't even know, we were all having a drink and I was having probably a salad and I don't know, we're just sitting there eating and we see this woman walk, walk, this older woman. Now, look, I'm 55. I'm not being critical. His mom must be like 75, right? Maybe she, she might be a little older than that. She is wearing, this woman is wearing a sheer bathing suit cover-up, high heels, and a bikini, and jewelry. Are you ready? It was his mother. It was his mother. He's like, He's like, you could not have written this. She didn't know where we were. Like, she didn't know. He just told me. He's like, he goes, that's my mother. He's like, that is my mother. It was his mother. It was really his mother. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, she is the exact. Yes. So all of our friends at the bar got to see his mother walking down the main drag of this little town in, on Maui. In a bikini with a sheer lace cover up in her high heels and jewelry. Okay? For reals. I cannot make my life up. You guys, when I tell you my life is ridiculous, I'm serious. And we were just, I was like floored. Okay, you guys, I'm I'm not a prude in any way, shape, or form. But I don't want to draw unnecessary attention to myself <laughs> ever. Okay. But that, oh, yes. She was walking down the street in her bathing suit. Yes. The Housewives of Maui. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Hey, Don, the Housewives of Maui. You guys, it was so, and, and we were there with all of our, like, I had, think, one of my coworkers, somebody he worked with, and I was just like, and they just started laughing. They just all were, like, laughing. And I said to my hottie, I said, are you embarrassed? He goes, Shelly, this is who she is. He said, he goes, who, he goes, you know, he goes, she just has no, 
filter. And he's just like, and anyway, we were just like, I said, well, at least she's got gusto. Okay. She's got gusto. Like she seriously had some gusto to be walking around. I know it is ridiculous. So later on. Okay. So fast forward, like a few days later. So he takes the little one because his mom and stepdad were staying in like some condominium. I was working all the time, you guys. So they were staying in some condominium not totally far away from where we were, but you know, and she wanted us to all have, to, and I said, I can't have dinner, but you guys go or whatever. So he took the little one. None of the other kids wanted to go. Whoever was around was always invited. They were all like, we passed, you know, like they get it. So he takes the little one and she goes and swims in the condo in the pool. She was little at that point. I don't even remember how old she was, maybe four or five. And, you know, she swims at the pool, and he has dinner with them, and he's like, he finally comes back, and he goes, "We ha you have to have dinner with us. He goes, otherwise she's going to show up at your job. I said, how does she know where I work? He said, because my aunt knew where you work. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't need her showing up at my job. Okay. So I agreed to meet her. I agreed to go to dinner with them. And we go to the Yacht Club, which can I tell you, the Yacht Club here is horrible. The food is horrible. Thanks, Dawn. I love you, Dawn. And I loved, you guys go over to Dawn's channel. I watched your video. Dawn made a video today. She has got some new flow style journals in her Etsy shop. And you guys go over and check them out. And they're beautiful. She made them with beautiful fabric. I don't need anything else, but I love your fabric journals. I don't need a thing. I can't guys I need to continue to purge before I acquire so I go to the yacht club they pick the yacht club I don't know why I guess older people like the yacht club the food's terrible there but anyway we go to the yacht club and it's like you guys at this point in my life I think I was I was either maybe I was vegetarian I don't know you guys I go through my own phases of what I eat and don't eat and all that stuff so no judgment. And all they have is prime rib or something. I think I ended up eating like the worst dinner salad ever because everything else they had had meat or dairy in it. At that point, I wasn't doing meat or dairy. So the whole night, she's like, like, you can't make a statement. You can't say, oh, you know, did you watch the sunset last night? It was really beautiful. Oh, but the one two nights ago was better. It was like everything was a one up me. And finally, I just, I was just like, oh my God. I was like, and I don't even think I was drinking at that point. I think I had given up drinking. I was trying to work on my, my health, like my arthritis issues. And so I had been, was doing some kind of crazy diet where like, you know, you eat like drink juice and do all stuff. And that's where I was. You guys, I hadn't had, I had not had, I love red wine, but I had not had a glass of wine probably in six months, maybe even longer. You guys, I ordered, I ordered myself a vodka martini. That's how stressed out, stressed out I was. I ordered myself a vodka martini. I was like, uh, I was like, I could not deal. I, I did. And you know what? The really worst thing is I was had been like whatever vegetarian or vegan whatever for whatever the six months that I was doing this whole thing so you guys know like one vodka martini with somebody who does who hasn't had one or any I didn't even drink the whole martini I think two sips and I was done <laughs> you guys it since then got better but it was like it was like every single thing and then she kept saying things about my partner that were like inappropriate, you know, inappropriate. You guys, we're not young, okay? We're not young, but it's like, you know, she was just saying inappropriate things, like, you know, trying to embarrass him or whatever. I mean, he doesn't get embarrassed, but, you know, she was trying. I love this picture. This is like from a National Geographic, I think. I don't know if it is or not, but I think so. Look, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a Halloween costume from like, I don't know, the 1800s. You guys, I was like, oh my God. But she was just trying, 
you know, he had told me a few things about, he doesn't really talk negatively about anyone, but he did say to me that, you know, his mom's thing was that she was, she would always put him down. And you guys, he is so sweet. He is the, the kindest man ever. And so, so sweet. Maybe I'll glue this one on this side. This is my version of your fatty patty, Don. <laughs> this is my version of Don's fatty patty. And I just was like, I, I just tried to stop her in her tracks. Every time she started to say something negative about him or anything or, or bring up something that was really embarrassing, I just tried to turn it back around on her. I said, well, so, because, you know, everybody always loves talking about themselves, right? So I was like, oh, so tell me about this or whatever. And no, it was exhausting. And at the end of the night, I said to him, I love you so much, but I cannot do that again. I said, I cannot do it again. And, you know, it was all over this competitive thing that she had with her sister and that her sister had met me before. She did. So she just is, she's like, now she's been here many times since then. They try to come like every other year. You guys, I have not gone to her home. I don't, I don't need that. I told my hottie, I said, please go. And he's gone a few times. Like, remember when they had snow Mageddon when the snow was so high? I love that costume pic too. I love it too. So I got this one from an old National Geographic. Whoever asked me where I got my images. I don't always get them from that. Because I just get them wherever they are. And I don't buy any expensive magazines. Like, I got mine free on Recycle Bank. Or I go to the library or wherever they're giving them away. You know, like old magazines or whatever. I don't, I don't buy them. I know some of their better ones than this. So, anyway, you know, she's been better, but oh my god, I can't, I can't even begin to tell you the most ridiculous stuff that has happened. I mean, we could never have planned that in our wildest dreams. Or walking down the street in her bathing suit. And the worst part is that town that the bathing suit walking went on is like really tiny and everybody knows everybody. And so then everybody was like, to my hottie, yeah, I saw your mom in her bathing suit. Like, oh my God. It's like, what I don't understand is why didn't she get dressed? There was not a pool or there was a beach there, but there was no pool and she didn't go to the beach there. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot tell you. See? glass of wine. Needed my glass of wine. Guys, so ridiculous. So, so ridiculous. I was just, you know, my partner is the sweetest. So, so kind. Kind, kind man. Kind man. Very kind. And very patient and tolerant of all of us. Not just, not just his mom, but very tolerant of everyone. He is you know how there are just some people in life that have more tolerance than others? He is that. He is the epitome of tolerance. Oh, you guys want to see what I got? I got these. I've been wanting them. I don't know how well they work. I, I did some on a page. Let me see. I got these Distress Oxide. One of the ladies. Remember I told you that lady? Um, I think her name, the name of her, her Etsy, not Etsy, her Facebook shop that she sells is called jack of all crafts she always sells things less expensive and these are brand new like they're not used and she it's her little side business and so i try to support her and i had bought these a while back she had these distress oxide sprays i haven't really used them much yet you learn from his mom's mistakes oh don't even get me started on my autocorrect i mean my autocorrect is like no, my partner is so tolerant, you guys. So I used the these on this. That was a painty paper, and I used, oh, I might have used this one. And I think I used this one, Blue Jean. I don't have very many of them. Faded Spray and Iced Spruce. But they're kind of cool. I mean, I, guys, I, I splurged and bought myself some distress, but I bought them a while back. So bought myself some distress oxide sprays. I don't know. You know, he's so sweet. I can't imagine, like, he puts up with so much, you guys. It's just, he's a nice man. It's like, 
he's just a nice man. But his mom, man, she wears me out. And his stepdad, I told his stepdad he's a saint. And can I tell you, she's the worst cook ever. And she always, whenever she's here, she always wants us to come over and eat at the condo that, that they're staying in. And you guys, the absolute worst cook. I did have her for dinner one time, and, and my hottie said, don't be upset because she never eats. So I'm like, okay, fine. I don't care. You know, and he's like, well, I just don't want you to get your feelings hurt. I said, it's not going to hurt my feelings. And she ate everything. He was like, oh, my God. And you guys, she's a food hoarder, and she's about 90 pounds. Like, oh, my God. I told you. Did I already tell you guys about when she came over to our house and took all the food out of her purse? Oh, my God. <laughs> So, you know, they're staying here on Maui for two weeks. And, you know, you guys, it's expensive here. I'm not going to lie, but they're loaded, loaded. She owns multiple homes and vacation rentals and all kinds of stuff. And she's a realtor and, you know, she's they're loaded. Not that I care, but it's like at some time you have to think I have enough. And, you know, I can understand hoarding food if you, if you, if you don't have any food, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Logically, I'm sure it's some sort of emotional defect or something that you hoard food. So he had told me about her food hoarding, you know, and I was like, okay, and I didn't think anything of it. Well, they were leaving to go to the airport, and they came over for dinner the day they were leaving, and she goes, oh, I'll bring something. I said, no, 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 just bring a bottle of wine, because I know I've eaten her food, and it's terrible. So I'm like, no, just bring a bottle of wine if you want wine or whatever. So, you guys, she comes, and she starts emptying out her purse. She has taken the salt and pepper shakers from McDonald's. She has taken, like, she brought, like, a like a napkin filled with, like, sesame seeds because somebody had brought, put sesame, brought sesame seeds on the side for one of her salads, and she didn't want it to go to waste. Okay, you guys catching my drift? <laughs> you guys getting it? You getting it? Oh, my God. He's, like... You know what? And he is so sweet. He does not judge anything. He's just like, he's just a nice man. He just goes with it. Her food is terrible. Just wine, right? Okay, you guys, I'm a fairly decent cook. No, I'm not like some magic chef or whatever, but I'm a fairly decent cook. And I like all kinds of food. But what she makes, and I don't know how she makes it taste terrible. She can buy like a pre-made chicken from Costco and then do something to it where it tastes where you can't eat it. So I don't even know what she does, but I just stay out of it. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm staying out of it. <laughs> Hi, Dorinda. Oh my God. You guys, that's not all. So that was, but see, this is what got me on the story of the stealing of the earrings. You were, Joni was talking about her mother-in-law. Was she ever poor? No, she was never poor, Dawn. Never. She was never poor. Ever, ever, ever. Never. She was not poor. She's a multimillionaire. She's never poor. It has to be a past life thing. Seriously, it has to be a past life thing. And I don't criticize her for it, and I don't say it to her in front of her face, but I'm just saying to you, can you, can you get the drift of, like, how... And he's just so patient and loving and kind. And he never, I mean, he didn't talk bad about her food hoarding. He just wanted me to be aware of it so I wouldn't be shocked at the level of food hoarding. You always carry a little napkin of sesame seeds when you go on vacation. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, it was more. She brought me like, she brought me like half of a fortune cookie. I mean, just ridiculous shit. And I just took it all graciously and I said, oh, thank you. And then, of course, the moment she left, we threw it all out. Marilyn, it's over. Oh, my God. So, no, it, it has to be a past life thing. That's all I can figure out. And you know what? I, I can roll with it. But it's like, if that's your jam to be that, like, eccentric and out there and that, don't be, don't be, dis don't be dissing anybody else, you know? Don't be dissing your peeps. Anyway, he's so sweet. So that's what brought me to the Joni story. So Joni was saying that her that her mother-in-law, she would make stuff for a show, like a craft show, and her mother-in-law would, would take it all. So 
fast forward to the night where she brought me the sesame seeds in a in her in a in a thing in her purse. Um. I had said, she goes, oh, I didn't get to see you at the art fair, you know, because I don't know, because I didn't do them all the time. So I worked another job, you guys. I liked her and her net. It needs something else, but I don't know what. Um, so she goes, oh, I didn't get to see you with your stuff at the art, at your art fair. And I have, where my crafting space is right now, my little dining alcove. I used to have a metal smithing bench set up here and I used to have like, you know, like a proper metal smithing thing with the ventilation and torches and all kinds of stuff. And I thought, well, you know, I don't, I think, it, I don't know if they came close to Christmas or something. Maybe it was close to Mother's Day. I don't know. I said, well, I said, I have a few things here. Well, you could see that I had a few things here. My house is small, you guys. I said, I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you t pick out a pair for yourself. So you guys, I had this box and thank God I didn't pull out anything really expensive, but I had this box and that was when I was making those silly soda can earrings. But the thing was, is they all on the top of them, I don't even have them anymore. I think I either sold them all or gave them away or whatever. On the top of them, I would always put like a piece of, because when you make those soda can earrings, they're very lightweight. So it almost feels like you don't have anything on your, oh, there's a car. You don't have anything on your ears. So I put some semi-precious stones or pearls or whatever on the top and wire wrapped them on it. And then I would, I would, I think I'm going to glue the red flower on her head. It's a little bit weird, but well, I'll cover up my writing. Maybe I won't. Anyway, so I let her look. And in this box, I had just finished because I had a, I did have my stuff in a couple shops and one lady had ordered that she already paid for, mind you, 50 pair of those soda can earrings. So you guys, I only charged $7 for those soda can earrings wholesale. So, you know, it was $350 worth of soda can earrings, but she sold them in her shop for three times that or four times that, right? And I mean, granted, they weren't a ton of work, but they are, you gotta match the stones and wire wrap them and you know, whatever, you know? And make the little soda can part, you know, run it through your run it through your die cutting machine and emboss it and paint on it. So I painted on all of them with alcohol inks. You guys, I said to her, we'll take a pair for yourself and take a pair for, for my hottie sister. You guys, the same way she hoarded food. The next thing I know, she's like stuffing. I think she took, I, I had more than 100 pairs. And when she left, I had 30 pairs left. She had, she thought she was doing it when I didn't see her. Like, what did she think? My hottie was mortified, you guys. He was so mortified. He was like, he was like, I'm so sorry. I'll help you make more. I was like, no, don't worry about it. I said, don't even worry about it. I don't know what she did with them. You guys, I do not know. Like, do any of you guys have 70 friends, 70 close friends? You want to give a pair of? <laughs> oh my god he and you should have seen him he's like so between so as she's stuffing the earrings in her purse and I can see her doing it you guys my house is so tiny she's also pulling out more food and her stepdad says make some like reference to let's make a deal you know like that remember Monty Hall used to like give people money for like all the stuff they had in their purse. Like, if you have a salt shaker, if you have this, if you have that, right? Oh, my God. It was so ridiculous. Yes, most lives are a way to hang out with your friends. Who's rude? Oh, it was rude that she took it. You know what? After the whole food hoarding thing and all the other stuff that she had going on, you know what? I, Don, you know what? I, it's his mom, you know? And... You know, I love my, I loved my mom so much. I'm sure my mom was not that bad. Like she never did anything like that, but I'm sure that to somebody else, maybe something my mom would have been horrible. I love him so much. He is such a wonderful person. There's nothing his parents could do that would like change the way I feel about him. And, but he was mortified. You guys, he was freaking mortified. He was like, he was like, he was so funny though. He was like, I'm so sorry. I tried to warn you. 
making sesame seed bracelets for Buddy Holly. Lala says her mom stole her ex-husband's jeans. <laughs> she he was six feet three and she was five foot six. Oh my god. You guys. Do you see? Now when I tell you that my life is ridiculous, I'm serious. It is so freaking ridiculous. Like, I was trying to tell my sister about the mom, his mom stealing the earrings. And she was laughing so hard she was crying. And I said, and then when I told her about the sesame seeds and the half eaten fortune cookie, and if my hottie was here, he could tell you other stuff she pulled out of her purse. You guys, she pulled out so much stuff. It was like, oh my God. Oh my God. It was like, it was like so, it was so ridiculous. It was beyond ridiculous. Okay, I think this eyeball is my favorite page. Thank you, Sherry. I love this stamp. I love it so much. It's a stamp ability stamp, and I don't know if it has a name of it, if it has a thing. It's called I. <laughs> it's called I. For anybody that wants to know, it's called I, and then it's stamp abilities. Oh, bye, Dawn. We love you. You guys go over and check out Dawn's channel, and go check out if you guys are interested in a flowish journal. They're really great. And she also has some cool books she said for um, for sale. So you guys go over and check if you, if you guys want a really cool flow journal. They're awesome. You're not, you're not rude. What are you talking about? Lori says everybody has crazy people in their family. You know what, you guys, it's just ridiculous. All I can say is that she's done some other odd things since then. And She's done some other, other odd things, you know, but I think that was like, that was my first meeting of her. That was like the first time she'd ever like, you know, the bikini, the one epping me at the yacht club, the whatever she was doing. And then the, the sesame, the food hoarding sesame seeding thing was just, it was, it, she's a little cray. She is a little, little cray. Totally cray, actually. It's all good. It's his mama. And, you know, whatever. He was he was really embarrassed, though, I can tell you. I'm going to get my sponge and see if I can... Let's see how this came out. I'm going to get my... I have it somewhere on my desk, but i got to go get some water. Let's see how... Let's see how this, this transfer came out. Be right back. Two seconds. I get some water and a household sponge. And for those that want to stay for the woo woo, we'll do woo woo in about ten minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll do our meditation. I'm gonna work on this maybe fifteen minutes. I'm gonna work on this for a minute or two. Anywhere. You don't have to worry. The dog, every time I move, the dog thinks I'm leaving. So she's like so scared I'm going to leave. But I'm not leaving. So I'm not leaving. So for those of you that watched my video early, um, the gesso video, you just lay gesso down and then put the magazine image on face down the one you want and then you have to wet the back of the paper to get it to release it's almost like it's the same sort of thing when you're using matte medium um it doesn't always work so we're going to see if this works oh melissa i hear you well you fit right in you know what my mom is eccentric she had her own eccentricities hi amy we are having a fantastic night. After the weird week I've had, because my whole week is, was weird. How many of you guys had like just a ridiculously weird week? I really hope this picture comes out. But the cool thing is if it doesn't, I can cover it up. What are your gifts? You have such a big mouth, you don't get a choice. 
<laughs> I literally can't lurk. You know when I can lurk? And sometimes I try, you know, it's not, if I'm on my television, I know I need to get that aux cord or whatever. If I'm doing other stuff, I can lurk. You know, I can, if I'm doing other stuff, if I'm trying to get other, sometimes I watch, so it's for company. You know, it's like if I'm like up late at night, like I love watching Stacy Pink Little Crafters. I love watching her and I, and I do chat if I can, but then I get, I'm still there, but I'm off, I'm off like doing whatever, like cleaning out my closets or whatever I've been trying to do. So can you guys see that it was the Eiffel Tower. So can you see it's coming through? So I'm just taking the back off of it, but you, you do have to be, okay, this is not a process for people that are in a hurry because you have to take your time with it. You really do. If you want a good result. And I would say you probably get a better result if you use nicer paper, like if you use, you know, like art paper. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Barb. So did you guys see Maridel Abrams is going to do her marathon? I don't know exactly when it is. I was listening, but I didn't, I was, I didn't get the date. Is it tonight she's doing her marathon or is it tomorrow? Does anybody know? I want to make sure I go over and just say hey to her. Your week was so stressful. Mine was unusually weird and stressful. I just had the weirdest things. It was just, it was the whole week of it. Like last night when I got my daughter to the airport, you know, when they fly in a company minor, you have to like fill out all this paperwork. You guys, she's been doing it since she was seven years old. She's 12, right? And she goes at least two times, sometimes three times a year. And so what was happening was, you know, they have to fill this paperwork. We always get, I don't care how many times, and we fly the same airlines, we fly American Airlines. I end up having to tell them how to do it. And it's so ridiculous. It's like beyond ridiculous. And then you can see the person that gets stuck as your person. They're just like, you can tell they don't want to do it because it's a lot of work. It's like this whole paperwork thing. Oh my gosh. Last night, I didn't even know if we were going to make the plane. The lady was taking so long. I said, to, and we were there on plenty of time for them to have, I don't know. I guess it was her training shift or something. It was like beyond Ridiculous. I hope this get, inspires you guys to try this and try it in a magazine journal. But the thing is, this this magazine journal, I put pages over it because gluing stuff directly on top of magazines or painting for me, if it's not a good quality magazine, they're going to be warpy. Because hopefully, I'm going to finish this. I don't know if I'll finish it by July 11th for my daughter, but hopefully, finishing it. Um, she'll use it. It's going to be a recipe journal. I'm just doing art on every page and then I'm going to put recipes I think she might wants to cook, eat and learn to cook with. <laughs> Elsa, she feels like her job is, is telling everybody else how to do their job. Last night I was like, my daughter and I have a ritual. So, you know, she can't have dairy, but at the Starbucks in the airport, they make a dairy free frappuccino with coconut milk. And so when she was really little, we, I used to take her, you know, I'd be like, oh, we're going to get to get that, that milkshake, right? And it would get her all excited. So I told her last night when we got there, so we had plenty of time. We got here really early. We have plenty of time. We're going to be able to get your, your frappuccino, your coconut milk frappuccino. And, you know, for a kid that can't have stuff like that, it's, like, so cool. And I just try to only do it when we travel because then it makes it, like, special for her. And it gives her a special memory of, like, remember when you buy me that chocolate thing? And, you know, anyway, you guys, the lady took so long last night, we couldn't even get our frappuccino. It was, like, we had to run from the ticket booth to the gate, and we had to go through security. And I don't know. They were frisking the guy in front of me in such an inappropriate manner. I was a little bit scared for him. <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, it was okay, but she didn't even get to have her little Starbucks thing. And I was just over it. I was like, first of all, you know, just thinking about having her on a plane by herself for all those hours, it always puts me, always makes me have like a little, you know, reticence and I don't sleep well. 
you know, I stay up until I get the text from her that she's landed in her in between because there's no direct flight from here. You no, know, I think there are direct flights from Honolulu. And so we've been talking about maybe next time I'll fly to Honolulu with her and then, you know, put her on a direct flight. I don't know. It's like one of those things. But um, I was over it. Guys, I so needed a glass of wine by the time I got home last night. I didn't have one. They frisk you after 9-11? Oh my god, Joyce. You be kicking out in the great outdoors. You're crazy. So I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight's woo-woo. And for those that want to stay great and those that don't, I mean, we'll, we'll do it in just a few minutes. I want to try to get the this layer of magazine off. And you go get your water for those that want to have energized water. So tonight, I'm going to take you guys do the meditation that I did all day today for myself, which was let going of letting go of the fear that of any type of fear that we hold in our body personality. Because when I the realization for me that fear is the only thing that keeps me from doing what I really want to do. And it can be any kind of level, some anxiety and fear. So we're going to release that. And I can tell you, you will all feel better afterwards. I can tell you, you will definitely, I felt better. I worked on myself all day with it. And we're going to bring in love, compassion to replace the fear and anxiety. Love, compassion for ourselves first and foremost. Love and compassion. I guess I should have picked a better picture, but I think it, it's kind of looking good. Um, we're going to bring in love, compassion, truth, perfection, and balance. So... It still has another layer of pulp over it. I'll hold it up so you can see it. This is definitely a practice for somebody who's patient. And you know what? I'm not patient. Not all the time, at least. So can you see? Can you see, like, this still has the pulp on top, and this is the picture. Can you see? I'm liking it. You know what? She's probably going to look at this and go, that's a piece of crap. <laughs> you know kids, right? They'll call you and she'll I didn't want that. I don't think. She may not appreciate it now, but I think as she get ages, she will. <coughs> Charlie, no. There is nobody here. <coughs> you guys, before we do our woo-woo, I'm going to lock her in the other room. She is like, she's on, she's been on fire since... <coughs> There, somebody's car alarm down the street is going off and she's barking. You guys can't hear the car alarm, but you can hear her bark. Charlie, stop! And you guys don't, you don't have to focus on where the, you don't even have to focus on what kind of fear it is. Hey, Johnny. How are you? So, Laura, when, are you, when is your next live, Mama? When are you doing your next live? Do you know? Hi, Dawn. Thank you for finding that video of Leah. I love that video so much. If you guys go over to the Crafting Mama's um, Facebook group and put Dawn's name in there, you'll see um, 
this video of her daughter Leah that was so hilarious. I love that video. It made me laugh so hard. So I think this is definitely going to take longer than I want to spend on it. But you guys get the idea. So hopefully I'll I'll work on it after the stream. So everybody get your water. And those that want to stay for the meditation, I'm going to do it in just a minute. I'm going to go put the dog up. So you guys can get it. See, there's still paper pulp up here, but it's coming off here. But see, if I'm rubbing too much, do you see rubbing too much will make it come up. So sort of like a... Oh my gosh, it I, it made me laugh so hard. I love that. I love Leah. She's so sweet. And she's such a good artist. I don't know what she's making lately, but she's a good artist. You guys subscribe to each other. Like, you know, each one of you are such good artists in your own way. And, you know, do such fun things. Dawn makes beautiful, beautiful cards. This is Dawn H. Creates. So go over and hang out and see you know, subscribe to each other's channels and go and see, you know, some things we all do really resonate and other things don't like, because I'm not a good card maker. I don't care. My cards look like my journals, like my, like this, my cards are not, I could have the same stamps and beautiful materials that you guys have. And mine never come out like the way they should. I could never have been like a stamping up demonstrator. <laughs> Cause I could never get it right. I'd be like, um, yeah, so this one's definitely going to take a little bit more work than, than I want to spend. So I'm going to go put the dog up and get your water. You tried this, but you didn't do the water on the top. I find it works best with a kitchen sponge, okay? And so, and I, here, you can see my bottle. I have like a jar of water. I just dip it in, rinse it out. So it's damp. It's not really wet. And you have to be so, you have to be patient. Laura, we love you, and we are here for you, girl. We are here for you. All right, so go get your water for those that want to stay for the meditation. It's only going to last about 10 minutes. And, you know, if, if you have, you know, today's a really good day, especially because we've all had such weird weeks to um, work on letting go of limitation, becoming limitless. I hope we hear really good news tomorrow, too, Laura. We'll keep, I'll totally keep you in mind. I'm going to take the dog outside or put her in the other room and shut the door. And um, we'll do our meditation in two seconds. Charlie, where are you? Charlie? You can sit on my lap, but you can't bark. Do you understand? You totally understand. Well, I'm gonna stick her. I'm gonna hold her while I do the meditation, so that way she doesn't um, she doesn't bark. Okay, so for all of those that are new, um, generally at the end of not at all, but I'd say several of my live streams, I do a meditation, a, a guided meditation. And it's only about you. And it's only about letting go of whatever isn't working for you. And so today, I think what has come to me to work on for myself, and I'm just um, inviting you guys to share that with me. So is letting go of whatever fear and anxiety that you have in your life that's keeping you from having, doing, and being everything you want. Unlimited, limitless, um, that's keep, if you're gonna bark, I'm gonna put you in the other room. That keeps you from having, being, doing everything that you desire. Are you gonna bark? 
So let's get started. All you need to do to participate is to inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. You can do this with your eyes open or your eyes closed, lying down, sitting. There's no preference. It's only up to you. And on the inhale, you'll receive. And on the exhale, you'll release. And that's it. That is it. Charlie's, Charlie's just ridiculous. She's missing everyone is what it is. So let's get started. Inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Receive and release. Receive and release. Imagine yourself in a column of light and when you look up, you can't see the end. And when you look down, you can't see the end. This is your column of light. It is unique to your being, soul, spirit. Allow your column of light to surround you six feet in all directions. With every inhale and every exhale, allow your column of light to expand. Give your column of light the suggestion, heart of the earth. And with that, your column of light is right there, deep in the heart of the earth. Give your column of light big roots like tree roots. Allow your roots to go deep, far and wide, deep in the heart of the earth. Let's ask the earth to share with us our energy. I see this energy like beautiful golden light, but you can see it, feel it, think it, or just know it any way that works for you. Feel this beautiful golden light energy pouring through your column of light, pouring through your feet and ankles, calves and knees, thighs and hips. Feel it filling the base of your spine, your lower abdomen, your waist, your chest and back, your throat and neck. Feel it pouring through your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your face and head. And feel it bouncing out the top of your head as high as you can imagine. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in and breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to the earth. I'd like you to focus on your column of light above your head and give your column of light the suggestion part of creation, part of the divine, part of the central sun. And with that, your column of light is right there, deep in the heart of this beautiful cosmic angelic realm. Give your column of light the same roots you did below your feet, above your head. Allow yourself to receive the energy from this divine angelic realm. Feel it mixing with your light and the earth's light and pouring through your body. Feel it filling your head and face, your throat and neck, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your chest and back, your waist, your lower abdomen, and feel it pouring through your hips, thighs, knees, calves, and ankles, and out the bottom of your feet, expelling any and all excess deep in the heart of the earth. Ready? Breathe it in. 
Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection with heaven and earth. Now I'd like you to focus above your head and I'd like you to give yourself permission to be open and receptive to receiving love Peace, bliss, give yourself permission to receive truth, balance, and perfection. And on the exhale, I want you to release any and all fears, anxiety, that are holding you back. from living your unlimited potential. Ready? On the inhale, receive. And on the exhale, release. Ready? Receive. And release. Receive. And release. Receive and release. I'd like you to focus on the point of light in the center of your forehead. On the inhale, receive love, light, kindness, peace, truth, balance, and perfection. And on the exhale, release any fear, any anxiety that's holding you back from limit, living your unlimited potential. Ready? Receive in love. Receive and release. Receive and release. One more time. Receive and release. Let's focus on your throat. Allow this energy center to be wide open. Allow yourself to release any harmful words you've said or received from any lifetime, from all time, space, and dimension. Anything you've ever said in fear and in anxiety. On the inhale, receive love, peace, balance, clarity, perfection. In truth. And on the exhale, release anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. One more time, allow yourself to release anything fear-based in this area. 
from this day forth, we will always speak your truth. Ready? Receive in love and release in love. Receive and release. Receive and release. Focus on your chest. Allow this window in the center of your heart to be wide open. Receive peace, balance, love, perfection, bliss, truth, and clarity. And on the exhale, release any and all fears from all time, space, and dimension, and all kingdoms and planes. Ready? Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. One more time, receive in love. Let's focus on our solar plexus, our waist. And receive peace, balance, truth, love, perfection, bliss, clarity. Now on the exhale, release any and all fears, and this is your emotional center. So any fears that you have connected to your emotions, allow those to leave. They don't serve you. So you can live your unlimited potential. Ready? Receive in love. Release in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Focus on your lower abdomen. Receive peace, love, bliss, clarity, perfection, truth. And balance. And on the exhale, release anything that no longer serves you. Receive in love. Receive in love. Focus on the base of your spine. Receive truth, balance, perfection, love, peace, and bliss. And on the exhale, release any and all fear and anxiety stored in this area. Ready? Receive in love.
I'd like you to focus where your energy is in the roots in the heart of the earth. Receive peace, love, bliss, truth, perfection, and balance. Connecting right there to all of your other energy centers. Receive in love and release in love. Receive in love, release in love. Receive in love, release in love. Focus on the point of light where you meet above your head in the heart of the creation creator energy, the heart of the divine, the heart of the central sun, the core of creation. On the inhale, receive truth, perfection, balance, love, peace, and bliss. And on the exhale, release from any cell in your body, all cells in your body, easily, effortlessly, and enjoyably, any fear and anxiety that's keeping you from living your unlimited Potential ready, receive in love, release in love. you to hear this very clearly. Allow this deep cleansing to continue and occur. Allow it to happen easily and effortlessly. I allow the truth of the divine to flow love through me in all areas of my life. I am filled with the light of truth, perfection and balance, love and bliss. Focus on your hands and let me know when you feel this energy. Let me know when you feel it.
put your hands on your heart and continue to receive this healing light. I'd like you to take your hands and I'd like you to imagine anyone that you feel could use this upliftment. Imagine them right there in front of you. You only need to think of them once. Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. I'd like you to imagine an infinity symbol starting in the heart of the creation, creator energy heart of the central sun, the heart of the divine, crossing through your heart and ending and entering deep into the heart of the earth and crossing back through your heart and ending where it began on the inhale. Receive love from the divine and on the in the, in the earth and on the exhale, give back love to the divine and to the earth. Ready? Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. One more time. Receive and give. And when you feel ready, open your eyes and come back. And please feel free if you feel like sharing. Please do. No, it's not. You don't. It's not necessary. I'm glad. Laura, I put your dad in the woo-woo, so I hope that um I hope that it I hope that it helps. And everybody, while we're sitting here for a second, you know, let's all send Laura's dad some really um it's just some love, you know. Just some love on his um on his journey. Oh, you guys are so welcome. Now you can see why I'm like, you know what? I do the work when I'm doing it with you, and I get, I go mindless. It's hard sometimes for me to like, like I can't close my eyes when I work with you guys because I'll just be like, I won't come back. <laughs> oh, Laura, we love him. And you know what? 
we're sending him the love and the light that he needs on his journey, wherever it takes him. Aww. Very good, Elle. Yeah, I've been really, like, just looking at myself, you know, just self-reflecting, like, what's going on outside of me that I need to, that I can work with and work on myself with, and, you know, in this, honestly, if, I guess if my daughter hadn't gone and flown away yesterday, I wouldn't have been, I guess, looking at so much, and I don't think of myself as an anxious, fearful person, but you know, there was some stuff definitely going on. So I'm happy to share my journey with you. I'm happy that, you know, that you guys are my tribe and that you hang out with me for my weirdness. You hang out for me. You hang out with me with my ridiculous glue books, my ridiculous stories, and the woo-woo, you know. I love you, girls. Hi, Janelle. I love you girls. You're my, you're my peeps. I wish, you know what, would, the only thing that would make it better is if I could hang out with you guys in person. Oh, you're so welcome, Olga. I love you guys. You're my peeps. You're my peeps. You're my peeps. I hope you guys go make a creative crafty mess. And don't forget, there's lots of good streaming going on this weekend. Um, Maridel Abrams with her Marathon. So if anybody just wants to have company, it's awesome. And she always does something amazing. Uh, Stacy Pinkfield Crafters, the, the the video, the the hop, the live hop from um, Joie de Vie, and then um, you guys, my head can't think. My head cannot. I can't hold a thought. It's ridiculous. Well, I love you, girls, and I will see you again on Tuesday, unless something transpires before then. We love you, Curly. Girl, you just got to be who you are, and we all love you. We are all there, right there in the same crafty corner. You have a wonderful weekend. Laura, message me. Let me know how everything goes, okay? I love you, and, and let me know if you need me, because you know I am around. Anyway, girls, I hope you have a creative, crafty weekend. I hope you do something remarkably fun for yourselves, even if it's just with a glue stick and some ridiculous images. Like, right, Laura? All you got to do is glue. So, I love you guys. My head can't think. I can't. Oh my gosh, you have no idea, Barb. I can't. My head cannot think. <laughs> I love you guys. Laura, only if you can. Just, I mean, if there's something you need, that's all. I'm not telling you to make me an extra, don't make me an extra work on your on your list. <laughs> I love you guys. And thanks for putting up with my, I don't know what was going on earlier. Anyway, girls, I love you, and I will see you on Tuesday. And as always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha. Take care.